Welcome to the Church of Rock Show, Episode 8, Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. Hello everybody, welcome to the Church of Rock Show, a music history show by a fan for fans. I am your host, Dan Bukowski. Every week I will dive deep into some of the most important, influential, and sometimes simply put, the albums that I have found to be enjoyable, interesting, and that have had a profound effect on my life. I will talk history, dissect lyrics, and the most enjoyable part, I will get into my personal journey with the album. Before we get into this week's episode, please consider visiting the show website at www.churchofrockshow.com. From there, go to the podcast section where each show will have its own page. I will be including some extras I find for each episode, such as rare videos and cool photos from the era for the album being discussed. For you, you can interact with others on the show's Facebook page, at Church of Rock Show, where each episode will have a dedicated post where we can discuss the album and share our personal stories about the music. Also, I will be posting cool and interesting YouTube gems I come across spanning music's vast history. If you find something interesting, please share it with me, and I may use it for a future post. The Instagram page is at Church of Rock Show. Here I'll be sharing what I'm currently listening to, and posting more cool photos from music's vast history. The show can also be followed on Twitter, at Church of Rock 75. You can support the show by telling the music fan in your life about the show. Word of mouth goes a long way, and would be greatly appreciated. If you like what you hear, consider leaving a five-star review for the show on Apple Podcasts. We want to get this content out to as many people as possible, and those reviews go a long way with getting the show to the top of the directories. Also hit the subscribe button to wherever you listen to your podcast to be sure you never miss an episode. Now on to the show. Hello everybody. Here we are on to the eighth episode of the Church of Rock show. Here I'll be discussing Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. Master of Reality is the third studio album by who I consider to be the fathers of heavy metal music, Black Sabbath. Master of Reality was created in a more elaborate approach than their previous two albums, Black Sabbath and Paranoid. They had no time to bang, bang those albums out. But for Master of Reality, the band was given more time to write and more studio time in general. Black Sabbath again used Roger Bain as the producer and Tom, Tom Allum as engineer for the album, just as they did with the previous two albums. I feel this was a wise move by the, on the band's part because there was a change in how they were working in relation when it came to time and they had more of it. And having two true pros managing the Master of Reality album was key as it kept the band on task and focused on their art. Black Sabbath drummer Bill Ward on working with Bane and Alum. Our attitude was, why change what had worked before? We knew and liked Roger and Tom. However, I think they must have found us difficult to work with on Master of Reality. Previously, we didn't have a clue what to do in the studio and relied heavily on them. But by this time, we were a lot more together, understood what was involved, and were more opinionated on how things should be done. In my opinion, having Bane and Alum were essential to be what I put in quotes, the no men in this equation. Ward and the rest of the band were getting more comfortable with the recording process, but they are not all the way there yet. We have to take ourselves back to 1971. And this is something I always do when it comes to historical recordings where I wasn't alive for and have to, and I have to understand Black Sabbath was young, a new band, and even still during the recordings of Master Reality, and they still needed a little bit of leadership and guidance on this record to make it the best it could be. In retrospect, this was a wise decision. Master of Reality was recorded at Island Studios in London from February to April 1971. Roughly 60 days to create a classic album doesn't seem like much time, but this was an eternity considering how they had worked previously. Bill Ward on having real time to create Master of Reality. On the first album, we had two days to do everything and not much more time for Paranoid. But now we can take our time and try out different things. We all embraced the opportunity. Tony threw in classical guitar parts. Geezer's bass was virtually doubled in power. And I went for bigger bass drums. 
also experimenting with overdubs, and Ozzy was so much better. The sound of Master of Reality is getting heavier. The previous two albums are heavy and strong, but in my opinion, they are more straight-ahead rock albums in the sound and lyrical themes. But this is a, a bit more accessible uh, in the with the songwriting uh, on the previous two albums, especially at Paranoid. I go back to my Black Sabbath experience and taking in their work as a teenager in the early 90s, consuming the music first on classic rock radio, where Paranoid, Iron Man, and War Pigs were in heavy rotation. At the Master of Reality tracks are not being played often. You would get Sweet Leaf occasionally. Here's an excerpt from the wiki, the, the wiki page of Master of Reality, stating that Master of Reality is one of those first doom metal albums. And I think that's kind of an important uh, thing to really consider when you talk about airplay on these songs, because let's face it, doom metal, not really getting heavy airplay on the radio, but... When you look at those first two albums, Black Sabbath and Paranoid, they're definitely more straight ahead rock, in my opinion. So they're going to be more appealing to the masses rather than an album like Master of Reality. But let's get into doom metal a little bit. And the definition of doom metal is an extreme sub subgenre of heavy metal music that typically uses slower tempos, low tuned guitars, and much thicker or heavier sound than other heavy metal genres. This encapsulates Master of Reality perfectly. It is thick, and it is heavy, but at the same time it's pleasing. The album was recorded pretty well in my opinion. It's not an audiophile masterpiece, but considering the new and fresh sound this album has, the production team and the band really hit it out of the park on this one. Bill Ward on the Master of Reality sound. I believe Master of Reality was a lot heavier than anything we'd attempted before. We had a lot more confidence and really wanted to use it properly. On the previous two records, we had so little time that all we can do is record as a live band. That was our strength anyway. We do, we've do we done so many gigs that we were very tight, but this was the first time when we didn't have gigs booked in and could just focus on making the album a landmark. Black Sabbath guitarist Tony Iommi. The whole thing was an experiment. We tuned down to get more power and a fatter sound. Of course, Ozzy started singing higher. He'd go, oh, I can reach that note now. However, when we got on stage, he couldn't do it. And here's an excerpt from the wiki on Tony Iommi's sound on Master of Reality. Iommi down-tuned his guitar 11 by two steps in effort to reduce string tension, thus making the guitar less painful for him to play. This pain was the result of a factory accident years earlier in which he had the tips of the two, two of his fingers severed, and the down tuning also helped the guitars produce what he called a bigger, heavier sound. History has been laid out that Black Sabbath was a group who loved to party and those excesses would eventually put a strain on the band, and it reflected in their output. During the time of Master Reality, the band was focused, and they were a cohesive unit. Bill Ward on the band's alcohol and drug consumption during the Master Reality period. I won't pretend there weren't alcohol and drugs around, because we're getting into those sort of things, admits Bill. But back then, we still had control over those habits. I can keep my drinking and drugging right down in the studio, so it didn't affect my playing. I could have a drink at the pub and know when to stop. This only became an issue a few years on. Making the third album was more important than getting out of our heads. The album artwork on Master of Reality is, simple, is a simple and strong statement. It's a black background with the words Black Sabbath, Master of Reality taking up virtually all the space on the cover. Original copies of Master of Reality had the title track in black and embossed for, a, for it to slightly stand out. This is my favorite version of the artwork, by the way, but later versions had Master of Reality in gray, gray lettering, and this is the version that I'm most familiar with. The lettering on the cover was what my simple mind can best describe as wavy, which gives it a mystical feel to it. The nerd mind in me wants to know what exact font is being used for Master of Reality. I dug around and found that the font was designed by Bloomsbury Group, 
and art directed by Mike Stanford. The design is based in distorted and emboldened lettering using the font Cable Ultra or Cabell Ultra. We're going to spell it as K-E-B-E-L and then the word Ultra. So just in case if you want to do any graphic design work using the Master of Reality font. Master of Reality did well on the charts, peaking at number eight in the U.S. and number five in the U.K. Reviews upon the release of Master of Reality were not favorable. Robert Christgau of The Village Voice said, The album is a dim-witted, amoral exploitation. Pretty simple there, Robert. <laughs> Gotta love him. Lester Bangs of Rolling Stone says, Monotonous and hardly an improvement over the predecessor. Although he found the lyrics more revealing because they offer some answers to the dark cul-de-sacs of Paranoid. Imagine if we took the critics for their word and based on what we listened to on their opinion, we would have missed out. We would have, we would have missed out on Master of Reality and Black Sabbath would have ultimately died. History has treated this album well. It has sold over 2 million copies in the U.S. and Rolling Stone ranked Master of Reality number 298 on their top 500 albums list. That's a brief history of Master of Reality, but before we jump into the tracks, I want to know I will be using the track lineup from the UK version of the album. I'm doing this for a few reasons. I believe this is the track listing that the band deemed as the definitive version, and it's the track listing that I'm familiar with. The original US LP pressings break up the tracks Children of the Grave, Lord of This World, and Into the Void into two tracks each respectively making them listed as six unique tracks rather than three and expanding the total track listing to the total of 11 rather than the proper eight. I tried to find a reason for the track listing expansion on the U.S. versions, but I came up empty. I can only assume it was a thing to do with marketing of the album, as Warner Brothers may have thought the album would have been a bit tougher to sell with only eight tracks. The album's only 34 minutes, and two of the eight tracks are short instrumentals, this is all I can come up with. I know it's not groundbreaking or factual or a factual res- representation by any means, but if somebody d- would know anything about any of the information, I would love to know. You can share those thoughts on a Facebook post for the or the show, or if you want to reach out to me directly through the website, churchofrockshow.com, that'd be great. And I'll get this out to the community. Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to move on to the tracks. And then also... Before I jump into the tracks again, i got more to say. I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time than I've done on the previous episodes of Jump Into The Tracks. Um, just because I, I've really tried to take, really go on painstakingly to take a lot of notes when it came to tra- the tracks. But I feel like uh, to get a better um, feeling and to make this more of a feeling type of thing, I'm going to be freestyling these tracks Oh yeah, baby. Come on now. Oh yeah. Try me out, baby. All right. Oh yeah. I want you part of this sweet leaf. Oh yeah. Now, let's just get down to brass tacks about this one. This has been 100% confirmed by the band. This is a song about marijuana. (laughs) And what's really, what I find very amusing about it is when you really look at these lyrics... It's almost like they're talking about somebody that they're in love with. Uh, somebody, that, like, it's, like it's a person in, a, in many ways. They're taking this, this plant and they're almost kind of like humanizing it, which is so amusing. And I think this is what probably causes some confusion for some people because I've gone into various uh, message boards where you know, we'll, people will try to interpret what's going on with lyrics to music and it's just so funny that I just think that there's just a lot of people that are are in denial about what this song is about because they really like it and it's something that they enjoy and then it's almost kind of like it's kind of tearing apart at their moral compass is like wow I really enjoy this song that's by this heavy metal band and I 
I'll put that in quotes, Black Sabbath and, you know, just some of the misconceptions about the bands like, like, oh man, I, I can't believe that I like this song and it's about drugs. There's no way this is, this is clearly a love song. It is a love song in, in a lot of ways, but it's a love song about cannabis and there's just really not much more to say about that because the band for themselves is confirmed what this is about. And then the really cool part about the track is the beginning of it when it's Tony Iommi coughing. And if that's not an indicator as to where these guys are, what these guys are talking about, then I just don't know what is. But really, Sweet Leaf is probably the most well-known and popular song on Master of Reality. It's probably the only song that I've really heard play on classic rock radio in my time. And they've probably gone into some of the other tracks on a little bit of a, like a deep track type of show. But Sweet Leaf is the type of song that you can hear it pretty much at any time on classic rock radio. It's really good. It's really well done. It's short and sweet. It's got kind of a pop feel to it. It probably could have been probably could have been from a single. But I don't think that Warner Brothers or Vertigo in the UK were probably really keen about releasing a song that's just so blatantly about cannabis as a single so it's just kind of it's just there on the album and it's kind of taken a life of its own at this point the next track is after forever and let's jump into these lyrics have you ever thought about your soul can it be saved or perhaps you think when you're dead you just stay in your grave is god just a thought within your head or is he a part of you is Christ just a name that you just read in a book when you were in school? When you think about death, do you lose your breath or do you keep your cool? Would you like to see the Pope on the end of the rope? Do you think he's a fool? Well, I've seen the truth. Yes, I've seen the light and I've changed my ways. And I'll be prepared when you're lonely and scared at the end of your days. Now let's take a pause here. This here is definitely about religion and more specifically, it's about Christianity. And this is where I just feel like Black Sabbath over the years. And then even up at this time, were almost kind of like miscast in a lot of ways where, oh, Black Sabbath. Look at the, look at the name of that. Look at the name of that band. They're just... They're, they're just disrespectful to Christianity. Why would you call Sabbath black? And they're, obviously they're, they're Satanists. I mean, look at it. And their first album, the Inside Cover, they have an upside down cross. But, you know, that, that really, that, that wasn't something that the band really decided on. I mean, they're, these guys were really into Christianity and the stories behind it. And what's cool about the opening lyrics on, on here is this is almost kind of like talking about a person who's almost kind of having second thoughts about their beliefs uh, just because, you know, many times when we're taught about, about Christianity and just to kind of just throw this out to the rest of the audience, I grew up in the Catholic church and I grew up going to what would be considered Catholic school. And I would say when it came to religion, they they really try to teach it and make it very human. Like God is a very human type being where it's just kind of like one of those things like, like we really don't know. And I think it's fine for people who consider a God as a human being, because that's you know really something that, that gives them a little bit of comfort and that's completely fine. But for the most part, God is something that's in our mind and they're almost kind of questioning some of the stuff here um, within these lyrics. And then, you know, again, even questioning the human aspect of Christ. They say, is Christ just a name that you read in a book when you're in school? And it's being posed as a question. And then also, uh, when it comes to the leader of the Catholic Church, they're like, would you like to see the Pope on the end of the rope? Do you think he's a fool? Yeah, I can, I can see that. That's definitely a, a bit extreme, but there are people out there that have grown up in whatever faith that they're in 
and they start questioning things as they go along. And that's where I just pretty much see how After Forever gets its start is having those questions. And those questions continue throughout the song. Could it be you're afraid of what your friends might say? If they knew you believe in God above, they should realize before they criticize that God is the only way to love. Is your mind so small that you have to fall and with the pack wherever they run? Will you still sneer when death is near and say they may as well worship the sun? And then again, there's something where Black Sabbath is like, all right, if believing in God is something that makes you feel good and makes you feel comfortable and in some instances, and I think it's kind of a, a crappy thing that people do to the people who are really into their religion is criticizing them and almost turning their back on them because of their beliefs. And this is Black Sabbath just saying, hey, you know what? Stand on your own two feet, be your own person, believe in what you believe in and stand to your convictions. It's a great message. And uh, the track uh, wraps up. I think it was true. It was people like you that crucified Christ. I think it is sad. The opinion you had was the only one voiced. Will you be so sure when your day is near? Say you don't believe? You had the chance, but you turned it down. Now you can't retrieve. Perhaps you'll think before you say that God is dead and gone. Open your eyes. Just realize that he's the one. The only one who can save you now from all this sin and hate. Or will you still jeer at all you hear? Yes, I think it's too late. And then again, it's going back to, and look at that. You can probably all hear that. It's kind of fitting. We have church bells going on in the background in my neighborhood. And I definitely apologize for this. You know, my this is, this is my home studio here. We're not really the greatest of soundproofing, but when you hear some of this atmosphere going around here, it's it's pretty cool. And, and well, we're talking about religion here and we have the the local catholic church's bells going off in the background which is really cool but then again this is going back to um just closing this out here i think it was true it was people like you that crucified christ and again those are the the people that crucified christ were the ones who were the non-believers and didn't think that he was the one he wasn't the lord and savior and this is kind of like like how somebody who would be you know really entrenched in their beliefs in in the Christianity can really view people who detract them and say, "Hey, you know, I know what. Don't don't bag on me for my beliefs." And unfortunately, it was people like you that that got this man killed uh, ultimately because you all didn't believe. So it's after forever. It's really a great story that that's being told here. Um, I think it's a type of song that. Or even like, like not even like if you're not even into the, into the music itself of Black Sabbath, just, just keep those lyrics in mind, no matter what, no matter where you are, um, whether it be religion or anything else that you believe in, it's like, man, just stand on your convictions. And you know what, no matter if you have, and I think it's just, you know, people who have a kind of what would be quote unquote extreme beliefs, they're going to get crapped on all the time. And that's something that you kind of have to you know, take on and, and it kind of goes along with the territory. So yeah, it's a really, really well-written song. So, and we're going to go on here to the next track on the album is Embryo, which is a short intro, which builds into the next track, Children of the Grave. Revolution in their minds, the children start to march against the world in which they have to live in all the hate that's in their hearts. They're tired of being pushed around and told what to do. They'll fight the world until they've won. And love comes flowing through, yeah. Children of tomorrow, live in the tears that fall today. Will the sun rise up tomorrow, bringing peace in the way? Must the world live in the shadow of atomic fear? Can they win the fight for peace? Or, they, or will they disappear? So you children of the world, listen to what I say. If you want a better place to live in, spread the words today. Show the world that love is still alive. You must be brave. Or you children of today are the children of the grave. Yeah. And this is what I just love about Black Sabbath and what they stand for. These guys are really peaceful dudes. They really are. 
And I think that as we, as history has kind of gone on and you look at a guy, we're going to, I'm going to throw Ozzy Osbourne out there and yeah, you know what? Ozzy Osbourne has done a lot of bizarre stuff in his life, but he's a really good dude and he's just a real, he's a really peaceful guy and he's just, I mean, yeah, some of the stuff that he does kind of stir stuff up and, and some of the stuff that he's kind of done to himself is kind of in a way kind of a shame, but I always considered Black Sabbath is kind of like, they're almost kind of like, like hippies in dark clothes in a lot of way. Um, I know these guys were very inf- heavily influenced by the Beatles um, as they got their start. And you can see it in, in the lyrics of some of the music that they have, especially some of this, this anti-war uh, music that they came up with. And this one here is great because it's, it's it is a very dire picture that they're painting here. It's almost kind of like an apocalyptic type of scene because how the the song closes out. You children of today will be the children of the grave if we don't get our stuff together here and we don't figure out how we can all get along and clean things up here. Um and this is a type, these are the type of lyrics I think are just going to be timeless as we go on because war just seems to be like a never ending cycle that's going on. It's just, there's always something going on. There's always sides fighting us versus them type of stuff. And it's just so unfortunate that we have to kind of deal with this here. And, and I'm looking here is as black Sabbath, they're, they're kind of almost preaching to, to us. And this can be at any time us in the present, like be careful on what you do because you're going to cause a lot of pain going down the road. It's like children of tomorrow live in tears that fall today. Will the sun rise up tomorrow bringing peace in any way? It's like when you look at the war or any type of war, there's death involved, but then you got to really drill down on this stuff. Like, all right, who's affected? The individuals who are getting killed might be somebody's child. They may be somebody's spouse. And that's just going to cause a lot of pain for those who love them. And I mean, this is Black Sabbath just saying, hey, Open up your eyes, people. Open up your minds. We got to stop this because if not, it's going to really end up in a dire way. And then I, I love the lyrics. Must the world live in the shadow of atomic fear? Can they win the fight for peace or will they disappear? And that's the thing. It's it's They're, they're basically saying they're giving the ultimatum here. We have this, this atomic fear that's going on here. We have these weapons that can really just turn the earth into a a crater more or less and just destroy and kill everything in its path. And the, really the only alternative to that is we need to find a way to peace. And if we don't find a way to peace, we still have that fear that we can disappear and everything on earth can disappear. And it's just really, really powerful stuff. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite tracks on the album. All right, so let's keep on, keep on keeping on here. The next track in the album is Orchid, which is an instrumental, which then takes us into Lord of This World. You're searching for your mind. Don't know where to start. Can't find the key to fit the lock on your heart. You think you know, but you're never quite sure. Your soul is ill, but you will not find a cure yet. Your world was made for you by someone above, but you choose evil ways instead of love. You made me master of the world where you exist. The soul I took from you was not even missed. Lord of this world, evil possessor, Lord of this world, here's your confessor now. You think you're innocent. You've nothing to fear. You don't know me, you say, but isn't it clear? You turn to me in all your worldly greed and pride, but will you turn to me when it's your turn to die? Yeah. 
again, we're, we're getting back to the religious themes here. And this one here is a little bit different. This is more or less giving, it's a message of giving it a choice. How do you want to live your life? Do you want to live the life of good or do you want to live the life of evil? And I think that's, I mean, whether we, any of us want to admit it or not, we all go through this. We all have choices. We all have the angel on one shoulder and we all have the devil on the other shoulder. And it's really up to us why, like, which one do we choose? And it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be finite one way or the other. It's very situational. And that's where I, I kind of think that this one goes here too. It It is situational because yeah, um, it's Black Sabbath saying your world was made for you by someone above that this was, I, I I'm not going to get into the, <laughs> I'm not going to get into the creation on this, on this podcast, I, I promise. But what they're trying to say is like, yeah, this is coming back to the the stories that, that we heard that, that God created earth. And it, it's, it's an interesting symbol. Uh, uh, I'll just put it that way. But then it goes into it, but you choose evil ways instead of love. And again, evil is destructive. And this is the, the themes that Black Sabbath is, is uh, going on here. And before, when we were talking about children of the grave, when we were talking about destruction, destruction is death. Destruction is um, destroying the environment, uh, things like that. When when you're talking about here, when evil ways instead of love, I think it's more personal at that point here too. And it's how you treat people and how you, and it just doesn't necessarily mean how you treat people in general. I mean, we all have our flaws in our life, but you know, we can go and treat people like crap at some times, um, time, but even though we may not it may, we may not mean it at, at that point. So, and you know, say you made me the master of the world where you exist. The soul I took from you was not even missed. Yeah. And th that's kind of a sad, um, a sad lyric there because let's face it. There's been many evil people in this world where when they die, it's kind of like, they're not going to be really missed. And that's kind of the question that's being posed here. And it's almost kind of like the good angel uh, saying like, like, hey, what's your legacy? What do you want your legacy to be? Well, people care if you're gone after you die. And again, it's just a song about good and evil. Pretty, uh, pretty basic stuff, but powerful. The next track is Solitude. My name, it means nothing. My fortune is less. My future is shrouded in dark wilderness. Sunshine is far away and clouds linger on. Everything I possess now, they are gone. They are gone. They are gone. Oh, where can I go to and what can I do? Nothing can please me, only thoughts are of you. You just laughed when I begged you to stay. I have not stopped crying since you went away. You went away. The world is a lonely place. You're on your own. Guess I'll go home, sit down and moan. Crying and thinking is all that I do. Memories I have remind me of you, remind me of you. Very sad song. It's, um, again, when you talk about, about solitude, it's, it's loneliness. And I think that this is the loneliness of, of uh, losing someone that, that they love and uh, it's the the singer questioning here oh where can i go and what can i do nothing can please me only thoughts are of you it's like you don't really know the circumstances around the breakup but this is the the writer saying like you know they're taking this in, in a in a really bad way and there's just a lot of sadness and it's kind of depressing but the lyrics are really powerful. And, you know, I would say that maybe these are probably the, like, I don't want to say that the weakest lyrics, but when you're talking, we're talking about the lyrics of, of everything else that's going on here with this album and the, the message that, that they're, that they're portraying here, whether it be religion or destruction or war or their love for cannabis, <laughs> In, in 
in a way that like this one here is I, I think more of like a like a personal type of type of track rather than a general type of track. I guess even you can even say Sweet Leaf is uh, more of a, a personal track in it, in it also, but I would say that's kind of like more like like a fun and almost kind of like a like in a way kind of like a goofy type of type of a scenario going on here but this one here is just really serious and it's it it's really comes down to yeah you know the writer's depressed they're they're alone they don't have the, they don't have the, the person that they that they really adore and they love by their side anymore and it's kind of like the darkness is setting into their mind but again powerful stuff um not my favorite lyrics on the album but they're still very good but now we're going to go on to the final track into the void Rocket engines burning fuel so fast, up into the night sky they blast. Through the universe the engines whine, could it be the end of man in time? Back on earth the flame of life burns low, everywhere is misery and woe. Pollution kills the air, the land, the sea. Man prepares to meet his destiny yet. Yeah. Let's take a pause here. Uh, again, we're talking about here, well, first of all, we're, we're talking a, about destruction of the earth. And this one's getting more into self-accountability of what we do to the earth every day and what we're doing to kill these great resources that we have on earth and what we're doing that's making um, and, and taking an adverse effect onto future generations. And what's really, I think this is one thing that I really need to put in perspective. And this is something that, when we talk about destroying the earth and what we're doing as human beings, I always hear, oh, well, I won't be alive when, when that happens. So what do I care? Guess what? This was written in 1971. This is almost 50 years ago now. And this is Black Sabbath saying, hey, let's take accountability for what we're doing here in the destruction that we're causing. And I will say I'm not, I wasn't alive in 1971, but what we've done to the earth in 50 years, we're not in a better place when it comes to, to a natural, um, a natural world, uh, that we're living in. And there's a lot of foresight going on here with these lyrics. And I think that's just something that we need to keep in mind that, all right, let's take a look at what we're doing today in the effect and what it's going to look like 50 years from now, because this is going to be future generations that are going to have to deal with this. And now from when into the void was written, we're the future generation uh, now. So yeah, um, we just kind of just need to take an inventory there as a society as a whole, and even as individuals rocket engines, burning fuel so fast up into the black sky. So fast burning metal through the atmosphere, Earth remains in worry, hate, and fear. With the hateful battles raging on, rockets flying to the glowing sun. Through the empires, the eternal void, freedom from the final suicide. Now, they talk about rocket engines here a lot, and I know at that time in 1971, we're still very much so into the whole, into the whole space race thing, and and the the um, the mysticism that came with space and rocket engines burning fuel so fast. It's like, like, yeah, I can just imagine, imagine when we talk about our cars spitting out tons of pollution. And I think that's, that's more of like a cumulative effect of a lot of cars, but man, can you imagine the, just the, the nastiness a, a spaceship is going to cause? And I, I think that, that it's almost like when, when we talk about space exploration, it's kind of like, like, that's just something that I just don't, I just really can't wrap my, my head around. I mean, I guess it's cool that, that people go out there and, and, and do this stuff, but it's, it's kind of like, like, all right, what's, what's the sum benefit of what we're learning from out there? How is that going to benefit us? And could we be using that, those time and those resources for something a little bit, a little bit more substantial to kind of better us here on earth? And I just don't know. Like, like how that, how that really, um, how that really translates in my mind as to with it, as I said, you know, space, 
space exploration, it's really cool. It's just seeing the images that you get from there. But you said, like, like at, at what cost uh, is this happening um, as a whole? And let's continue here with the lyrics here. Freedom fighter sent out to the sun. Escape from brainwashed winds and pollution. Leave the earth to all its sin and hate. Find another world where freedom waits. Yeah. And this is, again, we're, we're, we're getting that apocalyptic scene going on here. It's, are we going to get to a point where, where humans are going to have to find a way to get the heck out of this place here because of all, because of all the hate and all the war and all the destruction that's going on here and the potential th that the destruction has. Um, we haven't, thankfully we have not seen it to that level, but it's it's there the the opportunity is there for weapons and just hate just encompassing us and for the people that are going to be left um after all that if in fact it ever did happen are they even going to be able to stay here are they going to have to find a way to get out of here and go someplace else and not only from a physical standpoint but again Here's what I say when it says here, leave the earth to all its sin and hate. Like, does it just become too overwhelming for some people? And they say, all right, let's get out of here and just create a new society for ourselves. And we can't do that on earth. We have to, we have to go to another, to another planet and, and do this. And the song concludes past the stars and fields of ancient void through the shields of darkness where they find love upon a land, a world unknown where the sons of freedom make their home. Leave the earth to Satan and his slaves. Leave them to their future in their graves. Make a home where love is there to stay, peace and happiness in every day. And there it is again. It's just the overwhelming nature of what some people have going around them, and they're just finding a way to get the heck out of here. And they just want to physically get out of here. And in some cases, that's a good thing rather than what's how other people cope with pain with, um, with substances and addiction and, and everything. And, and when it comes to like, like now with mental illness and, and not being able to cope with that, it's, it's a way for them to get out. And that's kind of, again, this is a question being posed by black Sabbath. We need to clean it. Like, what do we need to do to clean things up here to not want to have people think this way because we do have a really good place here on earth and we should be able to coexist with one another and find peace with one another and find harmony when it comes to the, the environment and into nature. And again, this is where black Sabbath almost gets miscast in, in many ways. I, I'm telling you, these guys are, these guys are hippies in dark clothes, man. They really, they really are. But those are all the, that's the lyrics to master reality. As you can see, it's, it's just a really, I have only owned CD versions of Master of Reality. However, I would love to one day own an original vinyl copy with that embossed Master of Reality and preferably an original UK version on Vertigo Records as that seems to be the darling of the sound quality community. Enough of my wish list. On to my story. I bought my first version of Master of Reality back when I was in high school, I think. <laughs> this album was not my first exposure to Black Sabbath. I know my first Sabbath album I owned was the greatest hits compilation, We Sold Our Soul for Rock and Roll. And this collection contained two tracks from Master of Reality, which are Sweet Leaf and Children of the Grave. This was my primer for Master of Reality. I am very grateful for this collection as it got me into Black Sabbath, but in some ways I wish I could have devised a path where I could have digested Master of Reality on its own and not had a familiarity with those two We Sold Our Soul tracks, especially Sweet Leaf, as I played that song heavily. On we sold our soul and as i went on i ditched we sold our soul and immersed myself into the original sabbath catalog i hate to rank what my favorite sabbath albums are but master of reality ranks near the top the first two albums are very strong and they may be the band's best work but i always tended to listen to master of reality i never can put a why around it but it was just something that it was and I use this show as a historical document for those for these great albums and curating information from many sources and bundling them into one show, which I hope is informative and entertaining. 
but I also use this show as a vehicle for my own learning, uh, not only learning about the histor historical background of the art, but as a place of self-discovery. Why do I tend to listen to Master Reality more than Paranoid in 2019? Right now, it comes down to taste. When it comes to heavy music, I enjoy the heavy downtuned sound, especially if there are strong lyrics and vocals to support the music. Master of Reality hits the sweet spot for me. Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, and Bill Ward are nice and tight sounding on Master of Reality, and Ozzy Osbourne is on top of his vocal game here as well. I also like the fact that this album is where Black Sabbath was being more experimental. Not to say that Black Sabbath and Paranoid are not great or innovative. They are. But to my ears, there is a bit more familiarity to the sound on those albums. Uh, Black Sabbath is a group who are fans of blues and psychedelic music. And that music is a bit of an extension of a sound-wise to rock music of the late 60s and early 70s. Master of Reality takes another turn. They got even heavier than what they were. This is the building block not only for the heavy metal genre, but for some of the post-punk and alternative grunge music that I'm a fan of. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Church of Rock show. Please subscribe to the show wherever you listen to your podcasts. The show is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and Podbean. And the show notes page is on the website, churchofrockshow.com. If there's another platform that you use, please share this with me, and I'll work on getting the show there too. The audio version of the show is now available on YouTube. At this time, do a search on the Church of Rock show to find the page, as the show has not reached its YouTube minimums to give the page a proper web address. So please like the page so we can get the numbers up to accomplish this. Share the show with a friend. Word of mouth goes a long way to grow the show. Visit the show at churchofrockshow.com and check out the show notes page underneath the podcast section of the site for bonus materials such as videos, photos, and direct links to listen to the albums in their entirety on Spotify and Apple Music. Check us out on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Church of Rock Show and on Twitter at Church of Rock 75. Again, this episode is brought to you by Audible. To download your free audio book today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash Church of Rock. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash Church of Rock for your free audio book. You can link directly to the show's sponsored Audible page by visiting churchofrockshow.com and go to the support section and click on the Audible link where you can get your subscription started there as well. Until next time, I will catch you again for another episode of The Church of Rock Show. Thank you. <laughs>